Hello. Hello. Okay. Much better I, now. I, I, uh, I put it on like a hotspot, you know, because my, uh, my internet is really bad here. Oh, okay. Where, where are you right now? No. I'm in Aix-en-Provence. Okay, you're still there. But I'm living like, like uh, you know, like uh, like holiday thing, and it's like uh, uh, internet is like uh, for everybody, so it's uh, bad internet. Yeah, of course. But you you have uh, uh, you have not started practicing at all yet, right? No, nah, not at all. It's it's over like for this season. So we're gonna start, I think, on 20th of July. Yeah. And uh, that's it. Yeah. And I let's hope. I, I really hope that the season is gonna start like in October. So uh, uh, yeah, it's gonna be tough here next season. I I know. I mean, how are things with uh, with the family and uh, everyone back in Slovenia as well? Ah, everything is good. Uh, family is great. Uh, the kids are healthy. I have the I have them this uh, this week, so we are having fun. We are playing a lot of Animal Crossing. I don't know if you know, like uh, like Nintendo Switch game. It's like uh, you know, we are like you're like building and uh, doing stuff, and it's really fun. So we're playing this stuff, oh, and that, uh, that's cool. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah really, good, really good. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta keep keep them busy, or you go crazy. My my two kids as well, uh, homeschooling, and you know, it's both of them have very two different personalities. One gets up early and does the work. The other one sleeps late and then works all afternoon. And it just never the same <laughs> balance. Like sometimes I go crazy, but you know, it's not going to last forever. I hope. Yeah, I know. I don't know how it's for you guys in the, uh, in, uh, in States, but uh, here in Europe, it's starting to get a little bit better. So it's, it's uh, a little bit, it's okay. You know, I, I'm living like just next to the Gulf golf course you know yeah. and it's like uh when we had like a quarantine it was like uh better like n than now you know because we had like the the whole golf course only for us you know and there yeah, were like yeah. rabbits and uh wild pigs how do you say that in in, in in english you know the pigs the wild wild pigs. oh the you know that have like the boars so yeah, like yeah yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, they're like they were running all over the golf practice, and oh my god, like fun, you know. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> uh, but now you know they they started to play golf. Uh, they closed all the parks, so um, yeah, I mean, they, it was better for me before than now, you know. Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I managed. To... I, I'm glad you you guys are are doing well. So, yeah. first of all, thank you for uh, taking your time. I know it's late over there. I really appreciate that you're joining me on this call. I'm going to explain to you pretty quickly what this is all about. Uh, I'm starting this little uh, uh, Zoom cast during the time that we're all locked in and I have some time and reaching out to all the people, many people that I know uh, and starting these conversations, I mean, between teammates, uh, competitors, partners, or people who we met during our life in handball. And the, the whole point is the power or the extraordinary bonding power of handball is is incredible and you are one of the people that i met because of the fact you were once in new york city we met and of course we have that connection with handball very different uh, uh, levels in that aspect but we connected because of that so i thought it would be great to tell the story your story um, uh, how you developed to become the legend of handball uh, not just uh, in slovenia but worldwide as well so Pretty quickly, I'm going to let the people know that, and I'm not going to mention every single award that you won because we'll spend too much time, but I'm just going to mention the important ones. So you are a four-time German champion with uh, one of my favorite teams, Kiel. You are a three-time French champion with another one of my favorite teams, Montpellier. Uh, you are a two-time champion uh, league winner with each team once. Uh, you are a silver medalist uh, from a Euro championship with uh, uh, Slovenia. You won the bronze medal at the World Championship with Slovenia, and you are the two-time Olympian with Slovenia, and possibly third one, uh, hopefully this year. So, I mean, at 35 years old, you have played over 200 uh, games with Slovenia national team. Uh, uh, you've done so many things in life with handball, but the most important thing that I care about is how did you get started in handball? Who was that of that one person who got you into it? First, I would like to thank you because you know, um, 
Yeah, I achieved many things, but I'm still a normal person. So I really appreciate appreciate everything about what you say. So uh, uh, how I started? Hmm. Yeah, it was one just like uh, one uh, friend, uh, just one friend. It was one, my really good friend from childhood who invited me like uh, to play handball because her, his father was a uh, handball uh, coach. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, yes, why not? You know, and uh, we had fun. Uh, we went there and, uh, you know, Velenia is like fifth uh, biggest uh, city in Slovenia. So, and it only had like uh, 25,000 people, you know. Mm-hmm. So we just walked there, you know, to the hall and uh, we started to practice. And um, it was fun because um, there were a lot of uh, uh people there you know a lot of children there we had fun we played a little bit we there was no tactics we just had fun you know we played with the ball throwing the ball into the goal uh, and it was uh, you know i really remember this first practice because it like uh, it like uh, i saw that i'm like um, not individual person but like uh, i like to have like people around me so uh, I was uh, practicing tennis uh, back then, athle- uh, athletics, many different sports, but yeah. but handball like stayed in my in my uh, in my blood, yeah. and uh, that is how I started. How how old were you? I was nine. You're nine years old. Yeah, nine nine years old, and I practiced all the other. Uh, I changed a little bit the sport. I was like uh, practicing uh, ski. And all the other sports, not right. the, not the soccer. How to say it in in in, yeah. in, uh, in America? Well, we soccer. say soccer, yeah. Yeah, not soccer. Uh, just not soccer, but, but all the other sports like volleyball and everything. I tried everything, but like hand, handball for me was like uh, it was uh, aggressive. It was uh, like you had the you need to have like coordination, speed, and everything. Yeah. power and it was like the, I had really a lot of fun uh, when I was playing it and I still have fun to play it yeah. playing it so so yeah that's my start uh, how I started to play handball yeah yeah I mean like we all have that one person that got us into it and then we just kind of how, how did you do it uh, tell me how you did it, it was kind of like you like I was playing all the other sports I was really good at all the other sports tennis was one of my sports too I was Kosovo national champion um, in 1997 but a friend of mine who was playing handball in my neighborhood, I mean, he saw me playing all the time. He's like, oh, why don't you guys come? We need some young players. And we're like, no, handball. We're not going to play handball. It just it's, it's boring. We were thinking. We didn't even know about it. So finally, we go to one practice. And of course, how every uh, handball club is, it's such a strong bond from the beginning. We had the, the heaviest training. They made us run. I almost puked. I think I even puked. But it felt so good because in no other sport, I felt that way. After that, they took us for a great lunch for Chevapi and all the drinks. And uh, so it was just all of a sudden, I'm like, but this feels so good. I mean, it was such a pleasant uh, feeling. And then from that point on, of course, I couldn't wait to go to training. It, it just, it was fantastic. Yeah, it's really good. You know, you have, uh, you have like friends uh, just behind you or next to you and like you said, you, you, you're eating chivapchichi or uh, <laughs> drinking Coca-Cola or something else, you know. Uh, now, yeah. because we're older, we drink maybe beers, you know. Yeah. Uh, one, one beer after the practice is okay. Well, that's, that's, that's your problem. You're a professional. We drink more than one <laughs> up here. <laughs> well, ah, that's good, yeah. Okay. That's a <laughs> benefit, benefit of being an amateur handball player. I need to come to New York, you know, New York City to, to drink maybe after my career, of course. Yeah, that, I'm that, now. That, but after my career, I will come and I'll join you. Maybe we can drink one or two beers. You know? Yeah, the door, is always <laughs> o- the door is always open for you. But I, <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to remind people who are going to listen and watch this uh, that Slovenia is not a big country. It is a very small country with, with yeah. 2 million people and equivalent to the size of state of Massachusetts. In, in United States, but with 4.6 million people less. Now, just to understand how, how big and how important Slovenia is in handball, I wanted to know and to explain from your perspective, because you've been there since a long time and since the beginning of, of the whole development, why and how are you guys so successful? 
Ooh, uh, you know, uh, this is really a tough question because everybody is asking me this. You know, it's not only handball. We have basketball. Yeah. You know, uh, we have like um, hockey. We have like uh, athlete, uh, athlete, athletes are really good also. Not all the time, but there's always yeah. some stars that are coming. We have uh, many different sports that really that we are really good um, good good in. Uh, of course, handball is one of, of these yeah. sports. Um, I think that um, the, the most important thing is like um, we have really good um, sports schools. How mm. to say that? You know that uh, yeah. okay. you know uh, coaches coaches that are uh, ready to like to invest themselves to. Uh, to help the children that are willing to do uh, this sport, you know, uh, not only for the business or to for success or anything else, but only to to have fun. Hmm. And everything starts with the fun, because if you have fun, then you have like uh, um, good potential to do something else. Yeah. And um, when your children, you know, when child. Um, this is one of the most important things, you know, like we started our conversation, yeah. I had fun with the handball. So if I have fun, you know, it's going to stick with me until the end of my career, you yeah. know, and, uh, and the, I, I really think this is the most important thing and, uh, and what should each parent or every parent should look what, um, what it, his child wants to do it. Yeah. It doesn't matter what what the parents are thinking and other stuff. You know, everybody has a vision of his child in, in his head, but still, uh, the the children are choosing what what they want to be. Yeah. And this is the one of the most important things. So um, I think in Slovenia we still have like really a lot of people that want to that they want to help these children to develop, and they're really proud of doing it. We don't have a lot of money to. Uh, yeah. I know that there are a lot of sports in Slovenia. I know about not only Slovenia, but in other countries like uh, gymnastics and um, other sports that are um, judo and stuff. Yeah. Uh, they are not uh, having a lot of money, but still they're they're having a lot of coaches that are doing it with pleasure, yeah. helping them and uh, developing them, not only as an um, athlete but also as a person. So. I think that in Slovenia are really good doing that, and I hope we're gonna do that uh, in future. Yeah, look, I mean, I I, I spoke to to Ljubo Ljubo Vranjas the other day, and yeah. and again, uh, my my brother and his wife and his family actually moved to uh, to Ljubljana, Slovenia, because huh? uh, uh, she worked for the national Ljubljanska banka, and. Oh, okay. uh, and um, I mean, they tell me like how amazing it's over there, how, how how clean and beautiful is the place, and and on top of it all, the people, the players uh, from from Ryan, so like they they are just so passionate, and and they love being a part of the team, and they love giving it all for for first of all the teammates, and second of all for the country. And me, from the perspective here that I've watched you in the last few years play. It's fun watching you guys. And I was telling Ryan, so I said, look, I mean, yes, each one of those guys is some sort of a, a star, but none of the, them shows that. It's like that, that team chemistry is just, it, it makes you look like one unit without identifying one player. Hey, you got to watch out for this guy. So that to me is the power of handball. And I love that you guys do that. So I guess it comes to the part where it's from the national aspect of it, you know, pushing the togetherness is very important and uh, not necessarily pushing the, the star element. Is that any way, any, any truth to the handball thinking? Of course, uh, you know, not only, not only um, handball, but uh, every sport that has, that has like more than one person in it. Uh, I don't know if you watch like uh, Last Dance from Michael Jordan. Yes, yes. He was a, ah, he, he's a big star and everything, but, but he still had uh, like Scott Pippen. Then it's trodden behind him and everybody else. So, yeah. um, of course, one person can do the difference always. But uh, but the team is the team, and uh, and you can't do it alone. Yeah. So if you're one person against five other persons, 
yeah. you're gonna lose the game, even if you're the best or I don't know uh, the god, you're gonna yeah. lose it. Yeah, especially so, in handball. Uh, <laughs> especially in handball, also in basketball, but you need all the players around you. You're nothing without your teammates. Yeah. So this is one of the biggest. Um, uh, yeah, it's difficult to understand maybe to for some uh, individual uh, yeah. athletes, but 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 in, in in collective sports it's like this. You're nothing without your teammates, yeah. and this is one of the biggest and the most important things uh, that is in handball. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, I I'm so much uh, a believer of that. Uh, especially handball is a game that teaches you that if you don't understand what a team responsibility and and teamwork is handball does teach people that yeah of course because you know you play handball and in the defense yeah. if you don't have like your teammate that you yeah. can like count on on him yeah. and even if he does mistake and yeah one two times it's okay you're gonna do it better next time yeah you know you have like many 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 attacks many defenses so um, you'll do better next time. Every, each yeah. each player can have like a bad day. It's uh, he's not a robot. He's like yeah. uh, it's, it's his person. So so you can't be mad on him because no. he had a bad day. But the most important thing is that he gives everything what he can. You, you see that when he yeah. gives everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that that's the most important thing. That 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 is how like the team works. How I see it. Yeah. If everybody gives everything and you lose, okay, it's true, it's fine. You yeah. can, you, you, if, uh, we lo we lost against better team. We didn't do what we should do, or you know, there are many different aspects in in the. It's really complex, to you know, the the sport. So, uh, but the most important thing is, you know, after the game, uh, you know, we take a shower. You, of course, uh, have a hot head because you lost yeah. the game or or you win it. The most important thing is that you you can watch yourself on your teammates in the, in the eyes and you you know that you give everything. Yeah. And everybody, if everybody does that, you know you have really good friends beside you. So yeah. this is the most important thing. Yeah. The, the you, most important thing. Yeah. You as a captain of the Slovenian national team, um, how how is the team doing right now? Because I know you were supposed to play that qualification for the Olympics. Uh, you guys were really doing well in the last events sort of like gelling together again um so now it's stopped what what how do you guys feel about it yeah you know uh i'm always positive you know uh each thing happens with a reason so maybe the reason was that we needed to to have a little break with national team like like this one yeah um to connect uh, even more in this time to uh, to practice more to because we were fourth in the last European Championship. Yeah. To practice more to be even better in next World Championship next year in January. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I I just take it like this because you know Yubo came the last second. Yeah. Uh, we could we didn't have like we didn't have time to to practice a lot uh, with his system and we still managed to to be fourth in European Championship, which is one of the most important things in, in handball. And uh, yeah, I think that it's uh, for us should be a good thing because we'll have, we'll have time to, to practice, to prepare ourselves to World Championship next season. Next year is going to be really tough for us. Yes. We have World Championship and then in March we have like a qualification for Olympic Games and then we have Olympic Games. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, don't do we have we have like um the season the season is gonna have like it's gonna have like uh, 100 matches so and it's gonna be tough it's gonna be like nba yeah. with more contact <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well nba is gonna shorten the season for sure they cannot they cannot continue the same pace they have to but but yeah, I, I have to yeah but i i think it's great that you guys first of all go into the world championships uh deservedly so and um, I, I can't wait to see what, what's going to happen with that Olympic qualification because I, I thought for a fact the way you performed in the last Euro Championship uh, that you guys are going to qualify. So I have no doubt that you guys will move forward uh, to all of those events. So, and, and your team, is it, 
is it becoming younger now, the Slovenia national team, or it's still, uh, you know, 29, 30, 32 years old? No, I think uh, I'm I'm the old, the oldest one. So uh, the team is really young. There, there's a lot of perspective uh, perspective in this in this team. You have really really good team, um, especially um, youngsters that are behind that are they are really really good and really good to, not only as a player but also as a person. So uh, uh, this is really important thing and. Uh, um, they are willing to to progress. They are willing to work hard to be one of the best. Yeah. Even 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 if they are not not going to be the best, they're they're gonna they're gonna do everything what they can to be uh, the best as they can be. Yeah. So uh, it's it's really fun to work with them. It's really fun uh, how they're accepting things. And um, yeah. Uh, they have a future. This team really has a future. Yeah, I'm really happy to be a captain of this team. Yeah. Well, that's they have a good captain. I think uh, it's going to be fun to watch you next year a lot. Now the uh, captain has a really good player, so you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's it's not the captain uh, who is uh, the spot. Is the team always the team? Yeah. No, of course, of course. So, <laughs> so um, I don't know if I mean I I reached out to you, but I. Last year, we came to Montpellier. I brought New York City Handball Club. Uh, we started this partnership training uh, with David and Patrice. Uh, and I, at that time, I had no idea that you actually just moved to Aix-en-Provence. So, and then they told me, oh, no, he, he signed with Aix-en-Provence. I'm like, oh, no. I said, I really wanted to play against you for that friendly thing that we were planning. And then, luckily, I reached, reached out to Jerome uh, Fernandez and he said oh come why don't you come over and train with my team uh, one time I said great so I'm gonna see you there but then we couldn't go because Montpellier set up a, a friendly game in the big arena so we I told Jerome I couldn't come but then he mentioned they're gonna play PSG as a friendly uh, during the preseason I said you know what I want to come he said yeah come in bring the whole team so I came over there thinking you're going to be there. So I'm waiting for the people to come out. Like, okay, when is Vid coming out? And I'm like, what the hell? Where were you? Yeah, I had, I, I really, uh, you know, we were, in, uh, you wrote me on yeah. Instagram and everything. But I, I had some uh, personal, personal things and ah. uh, I couldn't be there for you guys. I really, I, I was really, um, you know, when you wrote me that you're in, in France, yeah. especially here in Aix-en-Provence. Yeah. I I really wanted to meet you because like uh, we had really a lot of fun when we yeah. met last time in New York City. So, but I had some per personal stuff I couldn't be there, and uh, I'm really sorry. I I will make up to you. I will come <laughs> to New York City, and I I make up to you even more. I will practice with you guys. Yeah. So uh, well, that that would be a, a pleasure, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope I have, I really hope. Yeah, I I really I know I'm keeping my promise and I'll do it. <laughs> so uh, ah, it's, uh, I, I'm really sorry I couldn't be there. Uh, I would I was really um, like frustrated because I know that you came from uh, from states and everything, and uh, it, uh, I wanted to see you guys how you were playing, to see uh, uh, your good guys, you know, your team play, to teammates, and uh, to meet them. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's always fun to to see to see you guys. Yeah, well, we we're definitely gonna gonna do something together for sure. We spoke about that, and and. And again, obviously, um, I, I know things happen in life and it just, it's always fun to see people that you know. And we had a great time. I mean, Jerome was great with us. And then we went to the, that VIP party with all the players. And of course, we, we met with a few of the guys from PSG as well. All the guys from my team were super, super happy and excited. And, and it was just, for us, it was, you know, one of those dreams. I mean, for you guys, it's work, uh, all this stuff. But for us, it was like, oh my God, like, I'm, I'm here with these guys. It just uh, one of those memories we're never, never gonna forget. But let's talk about your trip to New oh, York. You know, you know, I can understand you. You know, yeah, I really can understand you because you know when I was, uh, I, you know, when I was not, when I was a little one, you know, and uh, still playing like handball, not professionally. You know, I always when I wanted to see like players, you know, that are playing really good handball, my idols and stuff. It's always fun to be with them. So, so. Uh, yeah, I can really know what you're talking about. You 
<laughs> yeah, we definitely gonna do. You and I, we're gonna do something. But let's. And we have to. We have to. That's the promise. Yeah, that is a promise. Uh, that's we we mentioned this when you were in a trip to New York City, and I want to talk about that a little bit with you. I remember when you came in and we went out. It was a beautiful day. It was summertime. And um, what what do you like about New York City? What did you like the most about New York City? I I like you know the, the, I, that was the second time I was in New York City, but I really like um, everything. Mm -hmm. You know, people are open, easy to talk, you know. Um, you know, you can do everything what you want, you know. Yeah. And it's, uh, I really had fun, you know, especially I like, you know, the mentality, how it works, you know. Um, at the morning, you know, when you wake up, you know, you, you know, maybe you, you're living in, in you know, in New York City and maybe you're not saying this, but, you know, I just went to, to Starbucks, you know, yeah. and we had a coffee and, uh, I was watching how people are doing like each day and they're just like, you know, they're going to practice, you know, at the morning running or something. Yeah. They're taking coffee to go. Yeah. Uh, talking on telephone, you know, or <laughs> with a friend in the line, you know, or they're waiting in the, yeah. you know, for the coffee. Not, not Maybe not a friend, you know, but just Someone. somebody, you know, yeah. and I really like this spirit, you know, that you're open for, uh, for everybody talking to everybody and it's really when you're rocking uh, um, on these avenues uh, you can really connect with people and that's uh, like really open spirit and I really like this I really love this yeah well you know what you're always welcome here and again it's very different right now because very few people are in the streets for uh, many reasons but uh, um, for me even though I've been here for 20 years or so it still feels a lot of times like, oh, it's the first time. And honestly, I don't see this yeah. out of ordinary, but it just because of the presence of the people and for, for the energy that is yeah. created and the new things that come up all the time and, and you have everything you want at all time, if you want it. I mean, you don't have to go chase all this stuff all the time, but just at any time, you just used to be that way before this whole thing started. So. We're all hoping for that to come back the same way it was. It's going to come back. Stay positive, man. <laughs> it's going to come back. It, it always comes back. You know, New York was New York City was had like a bad moment, but uh, each time it came back. So yeah. uh, I don't think that this coronavirus is going to gonna stop yeah. this spirit. I, I, I don't, don't think so. Yeah, I really I, don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I will stay positive. I know New York will come back. So uh, <laughs> what... So you, you have such a great career. You're, to me, only 35 years old and you're still doing great. What's going to happen with you after you decide to retire? What are you going to do? What I'm going to do? I have a lot of uh, plans, actually. Uh, I really like business. I finished my business school in, um, in Denmark hmm. um, three years ago. Okay. Uh, or four years ago, I don't know, time flies. <laughs> but I finished it and uh, I, I really like to, I have a project to be like a sports agent, mm. um, especially to help youngsters, you know, young uh, players to um, take the right decision, to give them like my, uh, my advice. And of course, um, then they decide what they have to do or how they will do it. But I really want to give them my advice how to uh, uh, to think a little bit, not only one street, but you know you have a lot of opportunities in your career, so you have to decide the right one. And um, I really think that I can do this. Um, the second one is um, the second project is to to develop uh, the system in. Uh, um, smart home uh, smart home for smart home and um, yeah it's it's, uh, it's really good um, and uh, uh, I'm starting to do it uh, this uh, coronavirus crisis uh, made me a favor a little bit because I could work on the, all of these projects so yeah. uh, I'm starting to develop develop it in France and uh, we'll see how it's gonna go it's good. Those are two great projects. And uh, the, the sports agent, any particular sport or any sport? 
now, uh, this, of course, I'm from handball. I would like to help um, uh, handball players. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but of course, uh, you never know how it's going to happen and how it's going to end. So I'm open for everything, but I'm, I'm really concentrated right now for handball. Uh, yeah. Because, of course, I can see the talent. I can see the, the, the youngsters that are doing well. Uh, even even they don't have like potential. Maybe I can give them like uh, some advices, and not only to the players but also to the parents. And uh, uh, it really makes me happy to do that. So I did it before, and I would like to continue to do that. It's wonderful. That's great. Um, I think um, I mean it sort of aligns a little bit with idea we talked about doing that huge event involving. Uh, the UN or any of these UNICEF big organizations to create a, a global event that they can support and just showcase uh, obviously the, the stars like you guys, but then showcase the power of these stars that can provide to the kids and teach them certain things. I mean, we should definitely, course, do, uh, we have to do that one. Of course, because there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of kids in Europe, you know, that they don't know what, uh, what to do. There's a lot of like video games right now that it's not the best for them. Of course, I understand this new generation that the, they have to play a little bit. I have two kids. I know that they like to play some video games and of course they're playing it. But still, it's uh, it's really, really important to uh, that they're like moving, playing, socializing yeah. and what it's, the sport is the best to do this. So. Uh, um, I really, uh, it would, it, it would be a really good thing if we could do uh, uh, one global stuff, you know, um, to invite like uh, maybe the best countries uh, in the world to play handball, maybe one handball tournament or the best clubs to play handball tournament in different uh, countries that are not. Uh, um, that they want to develop this sport, like yeah. the United States. Yeah. And I think that it's uh, handball is really good, um, good sport, you know, to to um, to to interact people, especially young, uh, young uh, youngsters, to 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 come and to uh, to 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 have and try this sport. It yeah. could be fun, and they can develop something that uh, that. Uh, and that can help them develop themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not maybe maybe they will not be professionals, but they will get discipline. They will get to know what they want in their life. Yeah. So this is, I think, really really important thing. Yeah. And and you know that many years ago, uh, together with Lubo Ranias, we organized a Big Apple event in New York City. It was just success, huge success. It was great, but. Uh, Unfortunately, we ran out of the resources. And at that time, uh, the IHF and EHF either didn't pay attention uh, to us or the USA or China, but now they are paying attention to it. So uh, I talked to, to you, boy, and we both said we have unfinished business. So I think uh, uh, we're going to focus on doing that. And I think with if you want to be involved, that would be phenomenal to add another layer dimension to this whole situation because we have... We have the idea the, that worked before. We just need to get more people involved that uh, could take it to another level. So it would be phenomenal. Of course, I'm always there, uh, there, uh, not only to hand to 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 help handle, but to help uh, develop to develop something that it's really great. So uh, I know because we talked even before for yes. about this tournament, and I think it was. Uh, uh i think this was really amazing thing that you what you started and like you said it was it's not uh it's not finished yet yes and uh like you said you know we ehf and ehf uh, and maybe olympic committees should uh, should be uh, aware that uh, they need to help uh organizations that you are organizations that you are like you are so uh to to not only to to do these competitions to to, to attract people, but also to to attract youngsters yeah. to do this sport. Yeah. Because if you know, if you attract many many youngsters, then then they're not gonna go outside doing some bad stuff. They're gonna go and practice, 
and that's how you're developing uh, um, not only sport but also uh, people and the young people and uh, that is what uh, what uh, sport is about yeah i i completely agree and i'm really i'm really happy to if you need something to um, that i can help with uh, i'm really happy to do that yeah, well i I know for a fact we're going to do something. There's no doubt about that. Just uh, I'm here for you guys. I'm here for you guys. <laughs> but you still you still have uh, many many more seasons to play professionally. So you have things uh, that you got to take care of before. No, it's okay. You know this is a uh, real. Uh, it's not. Uh, I have uh, maybe one or two season, seasons more. But uh, even if I play, I can still do other things. I'm sure. like. Uh, I could, you know, it's good to do something else. Then, uh, of course, when 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 I play handball, I'm 100 percent concentrate on handball. Yeah. But you know, uh, life is not only about uh, certain things. It's uh, it's about other things too. So, I'm the end of my career. So I would really would like to to help uh, help you guys uh, because of me because I like to help you. And uh, it, it really, you know, uh, we'll have like a great experience and everything. So if you need something, yeah. I'm always here for Perfect. you guys. Perfect. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, now, I, I'm going to ask you some trivial question. Well, not so trivial, but I want to know um, your, your experience between Kiel and Montpellier. Very different. But I have to say, I mean, you played in those two teams professionally. Those two teams are my favorite teams ever because the system that they have in place for so long, I, I believe in such a mentality because that's tradition. So for you, which one was not, I should not say better, but what was the difference between two? Oh, it's difficult to answer that, that question because there are like two different words, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, of course, Kiel was like, um, uh, it's still one of the best teams in the handball world. So uh, uh, they won everything what they can. I won everything what I could with uh, with Kiel. I had like uh, four amazing years there, and uh, uh, the atmosphere. I don't know if you have you ever been in Kiel. No, never been in Kiel. Your next project should be that. You know. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, to, to, to get your guys there because it's really amazing atmosphere, really, really like a uh, handball, um, NBA in handball. Mm. And um, everybody, everything is like in this, in this city, everything is concentrated about handball uh, and mentality and everything. And then uh, South of France, of course, uh, it's France, South of France, and different, like mentality, mentality is completely different. Um, the system was um, completely different, and uh, and of course um, it was at the start it was a little bit difficult. I uh, really I can I can tell you that it was difficult because you know nor uh, north of Germany and south of France they are like planet Earth and Jupiter <laughs> now like completely other thing. Yeah. Not not in bad in 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 bad yeah, um, I understand bad bad thing, but but it's completely different, and uh, I needed to to uh, like um, how do I said it, uh, develop myself for for these situations, and uh, I'm really happy to do to do this. Um, it makes it me who I am now. I'm open. To, I'm a really open person now because of that, and uh, I can choose. Uh, I really can choose uh, what was better for me because the, the both the both things the both teams. I met uh, a lot of good players, um, great persons, and I'm happy at each second that I, uh, I played with them. So uh, I'm really happy about my decisions and uh, where I played. I, I think you, you made the right decisions and successfully so. Uh, I've, you know, contributed. I waited, I waited for this second Champions League title, you know, for 12 years or 30 years. <laughs> but I did it. I did it. I'm, I was so happy. I couldn't imagine. I really, uh, I still, you know, when I'm watching like photos from, uh, you know, from two years ago, I'm really, I'm still really, really, really happy. Yeah, that was huge. That was exciting. So, uh, who was your favorite coach to play for? 
favorite coach that you played for? Ah, there are really, I had like a lot of great coaches. It's different. Uh, uh, Noka, I think that was Noka, Noka okay. Safarovic. Yeah, really, because um, not only his tactics, but uh, how he uh, like uh, motivated players. Yeah. You know, it was like, it was on the limit, you know, good thing and bad thing, but it was <laughs> always a good thing, you know, really uh, psychological and, um, and I really like this uh, with him, but uh, Noka was really one of oh, he was the best coach in tactics. Really, each 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 move, uh, each thing that he said about tactics was the right thing. You know, it was it was not easy to do to do it, yeah. but it was really uh, really always uh, the right decision. So uh, you, know, I, I really learned a lot uh, with him. A lot how I think about handball now it was uh, it was him um, and in Montpellier was a more um, physical physical approach yeah. a lot of one uh, one against one yeah a lot of defense hard defense and uh, yeah I did my my part my part there and uh, I really I had two different schools in my life and uh, I'm really happy to to see both of them so the both uh, also Patrice uh, had like a really uh, different approach than Noka, yeah. but at the end, you know, uh, they brought uh, the same success. So, uh, you know, you, you never know uh, which uh, which type of uh, coaching would be the best for 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 the team. That's true. That's true. Who's uh? Who do you think? I mean, I've I would love for you to answer. Maybe two. Your tough two toughest teammates in your career teammates yeah teammates as a person or as a like uh, on the court like on the court on the court, on the court. I Thierry Omeyer he was like a difficult guy you know yeah. <laughs> he really is like a tough guy you know uh, there's not a lot of people that like him because um, he's not arrogant but he's like who he, who he is that's why he's one of uh, he's the best goalkeeper I ever known. So uh, um, he and the other teammates, um, toughest. I Tough. would say Nico because he was like he's my best friend, of course. But um, he's really tough, like on the court, but really kind outside the court. So so yeah, these two guys. Well, uh, it's funny because I've asked some people before, like, who do they think is the best player in the world uh, currently? Uh, like, 90% of them would say Niko Karabatic. And they, yeah, uh, Niko, no. Uh, there are a lot of good players, you know. There yeah. are Sagosen who is coming, you know, really good players. But if we look at them until now, I think, like, completely – like who's playing uh, defense, attack, who can organize stuff. And uh, I can say easily that it's Nico, not only because it's my friend, but yeah, yeah. Uh, he's my friend, but because he's a really good defense player. He's really amazing in attack. He can organize uh, like team easily and uh, he's a leader. So uh, I think I would say Nico, yeah. yeah. Would you ever consider coaching at some point in your life? You never say never, you know. <laughs> but uh, I'm not saying me uh, in this kind of uh, job. Um, uh, it's uh, it's difficult to, because you know when you're a player, you know you just come. You no, not just come, but you come to the practice, and you know, uh, tr trainer, coach uh, saying you know what you have to do, how we're gonna do it, and stuff. But when you're coach, you know, you have to prepare everything. You have to, like, uh, um, recruit new players. You have to, you know, all the tough decisions, uh, which I'm fine with. But, you know, we have, like, the same lifestyle that, yeah. that I have now. So we have, you have no weekends. You have no family life. You have no – you have time, family life, but it's, like, it's not as, as, as I want, you know. And yeah. – uh, 
and uh, we will see. Um, at the beginning, I really don't want to be coach. I would like to try myself in business, sure. like I said before, and like a, like an agent to help uh, young young players and players in general. And uh, maybe in this um, project for um, for smart homes, we will see. But at the end, you know, uh, you never know. Maybe I'm gonna miss uh, handball so much that I'm gonna start to be coach. I, w- I would love to be because uh, you have fun with guys. Well, I look the way I see it, obviously, because I've I've seen you play so many times on TV for all of the teams and national team as well. Um, you now you have guys who play, right? Do their thing, and so it's all fine, whatever happens. But you are in it. You feel it. You show your emotions. You've been to some two of the greatest handball coaching schools in the planet, I believe, especially with KLM on Pellier. Um, I don't think people can become coaches just like this and go to school and study like that easy. You got to be through the things you've been through with the right people. So I might come to it might come actually very easy for you to coach. Yeah, you know the new generations are generations are coming. So I, maybe I will not you know fill them. But uh, no, like you said, yeah, I had like uh, it was my privilege to play um, under Noka and Patrice uh, and the other coaches uh, also because you know all the coaches that I had they were amazing. They were really good. Uh, coaches and um, especially these two and uh, yeah I feel handball I love handball I like to give advices to all the players I like to like uh, um, give these feelings to them you know to to feel them maybe maybe you know maybe they will never like succeed uh, to win championship uh, or uh, champions league but you know um, I, I would like to give them this spirit yeah. Because uh, it's it's really good, and yeah, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe I should be called handle coach. But, uh, <laughs> no, but I'm, uh, not, I'm not saying you should be. I just know that it would come easy to you. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I would I would like to try myself in business. I would like to try yeah, yeah. myself in completely other thing because I would like to prove myself. I'm the really the guy that likes to to prove myself. You know, to yeah. prove myself maybe in other things uh, than handle. And of course, um, handball is my blood, and uh, I will I will always help people in handball, always help them develop some things with, uh, especially uh, with you guys. You know, in, in New York, if you're gonna have, I'm I'm always there for you guys, and um, and I would like, yeah, I would like to help, but I would like also like to try myself in other things. Hey. There's plenty of business opportunities in New York City. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Maybe I'll come to, to maybe I'll come to live in New York City. You know, hey, you know uh, what? It, it would be. It could cool. be worse. You know, it yeah. could be worse. You know? <laughs> <laughs> true, very true. So I, w- I was going to ask you. That was going to be my next and last question because it's getting late for you. And uh, like, when are you coming to visit me again in New York? Uh, this this year is gonna be tough because you know you guys are gonna be closed. We're uh, we're we're starting to be open a little bit in the European uh, Union, but um, I'm actually trying to uh, really I'm planning to come next next year next summer. Okay. I would really like to do like uh, maybe I'll come with children, you know, to show them a little bit around the, the, the states and uh, not only New York City but uh, especially New York City. I really would like to to visit uh, visit you guys. We have to find a. Uh, a great um, timing, you know, that I can see you guys on the on the practice. But um, that's the thing. If the moment you know, with time, we'll definitely schedule a game where you're gonna get involved. No, no doubt about that. Just whenever you know, let me know. And yeah, you know, I, w- I really would like to see you guys how you're playing, you know, and and to 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 have fun with you a little bit, you know. Uh, uh, not only on uh, like for the lunch, maybe uh, the dinner, yeah. you know, to, to go out a little bit afterwards. <laughs> we'll spend we we'll spend the, the yeah, day. yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, no, but no, but especially you know for handball, and then you know to show my kids, you know, uh, a little bit how yeah. uh, different mentality to, to show how how uh, how um, how the things are. And, uh, Perfect. I would like that they, they they experience some other things that um, that only in Europe. Perfect. We're, we're def- definitely going to plan that out. Vid, Perfect. 
thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad you're okay, family's okay, and that you guys are going to start back to practice and back to handball life again. I'm really grateful for your, for your time here and straight handball talk. I will send you the link when I'm ready to share everything. But anytime you have anything that you need from New York, we're here. I'm here for you. Same for you, Vinny. Always. Thank you, Vid. Thank you. Have fun. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.